Hi everyone, happy almost December. Um, I'm really happy to have you here. My name is Anna and I'm a knitter and maker living in Seattle, Washington. And here on this channel, I talk about um, knitting and crafting related things, mostly about knitting um, and yarn, and just share with you a little bit about what I'm making and what I'm planning on making in the future, things that I bring into my home. It's really fun and we have a great time together. I hope you, <laughs> I hope you agree. Um, we've had a lot of new friends join us in the last month, so thank you so much for everyone who's subscribed. It's really exciting for me to wake up every day and just see that we have so many new friends and to read your very kind comments and thoughtful feedback on my videos. So I really appreciate having you all here. If you are new, please feel free to join us. Um, and with that, I'm gonna start talking you through what I've been working on through the month of December and what I'm planning on doing working on to finish out the year. So um, I also wanted to put you in front of my little festive background. I set up my Christmas decorations yesterday and I'm feeling very festive and I love my mantelpiece Christmas Village um, and Sissel tree collection, my bottle brush tree collection. I buy a few bottle brush trees every year and I just find it fun to set them all up. And this is our first Christmas uh, season in our new house so I'm really excited to have the opportunity to get all decorated and I didn't want it to go to waste so yes that's where we're sitting today hope you guys like the background and with that I'm going to talk to you about my knits so um, November was a very busy month for me I had a lot of traveling and a lot of work and didn't have a ton of like mental energy for big knitting projects if you watched my previous video, you know that the big, two big sweater projects I have on my needles right now are color work projects. And I think doing two color work projects simultaneously was not my wisest choice because it just takes a lot of concentration and it's slow and a little bit more like methodical pace of like growing the project and making progress. And so I wasn't feeling super inspired by a lot of my color, wa color work projects this month. Um, and some of them I even had to like rip back and redo, which I'll talk to you about when I get to them. But all of that to say is that I did spend a lot of knitting time this month making little projects and really enjoyed doing some smaller stash busty projects. So that's what I'm going to show you first. Um, but actually what I'm really going to show you first is my hat. This is my August hat, um, which is a pattern by Sari Nordland. And I showed it to you last month because I'd finished it in the very beginning of October. And the last time you saw it, it was kind of like a beigey color. And I did decide to dye it um, like a plummy purple. So um, I will be slow with these close-ups so you can get a look at the detail. And I'm not sure that this is really picking up the color correctly. I'll see if I can get another shot that picks the color correctly, but it's more of a purple. This looks quite pink. In real life, it's like a cooler. This is maybe a little bit better back here. I don't know. It's more of a cooler toned plum. Um, and I'm really happy with it. I like the way that it looks, I like the fit. The color didn't take super evenly, um, but you can't really tell from far away. So that's my August hat. I did end up going for purple, not green. Appreciate all your votes, very um, love to hear your feedback. But yes, I did go for purple and I'm really happy with it. So that's my August hat, which isn't really a finished object, but I just rechanged the color. Um, and then I have three more finished objects to show you, which are all smaller projects that I worked on. So I'll talk you through them in chronological order, actually. So the first one I finished is this. This is the Dumpling Bag by Pearl Soho. Um, and it's the cutest little tiny knitted project bag or purse or whatever you want to put in here. Um, and I made this with a couple skeins of Leftover Drops Paris. So in the summertime, I ordered some Drops Paris to make the, oh gosh. It's not the lavender top. Maybe it is the lavender top by Ekaterina Voloneva. I've made it a couple months ago. I'll put the information here and I'll pop a picture of me wearing it here. It's a beautiful summer top with like a lacy yoke. I really enjoyed knitting it, but I ordered way too much yarn because I feel like I'm an over orderer of yarn. I don't think I'm trying to over order yarn, but I did on this case because it's not super accessible. So I didn't want to get not enough and I ended up ordering too much. So I had like four balls of Drops Paris left over. Um, which isn't really enough for like a summer, another summer top, but wasn't an insignificant amount of yarn. So I decided I wanted to use it to make this, this little dumpling bag, which is super easy and super fun. I knit it in like 24 hours. Um, so it's just this pouch and then it has one long strap and one short slap strap and you slip the short strap over the long strap to kind of close it. And then you can just hold it on your wrist. 
Um, and it would be a really great like knitting and walking bag because the yarn can come out of this area really easily. So if you wanted to knit while walking, which I do do sometimes. Um, and otherwise it's just like it holds, it holds a lot more than it looks. There's a sock project in here that I'll talk to you about in a little bit, but um, like I can fit my phone and my wallet and a bunch of stuff in here. So if I'm going out with just a project and like we go to the movies a lot and I take a project with me usually, I can just throw a project in here with my phone and my ID that I need to get into the movies and that's all I need. I just love how easily it fits. You can hold it in your hand like this. It's so cute. Sorry, the only thing is that my knitting needles kind of poke out through the fabric, but I really like it. I really like it. I would definitely make more of these as gifts. I think this would be a great gift knit because it's super fast and it's a free pattern from Pearl Soho and it's so fun. Um, the only changes that I made to this are that it has you do, so it's knit bottom up um, and it has you do a provisional cast on on the bottom. I ended up actually just doing a, like a Judy's Magic cast on or a Turkish cast on like I would do for a toe up sock because then I wouldn't have to Kitchener the whole bottom together. And I think, I, I don't think I'm the only person that has done that. I think I saw in Ravelry that other people have done it that way. But then I just magic looped for a while, like for the probably the first 10 rows or something, um, did it on magic loop and then just put it on a short circular and whizzed all the way up the body um, and then knit the little straps. And I think the only thing is that the straps do have a tendency to curl a little bit. They're knit with this kind of like I-cord edging, which you should be able to see. Yeah, there's like an I-cord edging on the straps, which helps it to not roll a ton, but it does still roll a little bit. I think it would be nice if it was knit with like a double knit strap to make it super sturdy and not to roll as much. Um, so maybe if I made this again, I would do it that way. Um, Drops Paris is like a heavy DK light worsted yarn. Um, and so I think my gauge is actually a little bit, I don't remember if my gauge was on or off for this bag, but I think this is about spot on to what the pattern recommends. The pattern is lit written with a linen yarn. I think it's there, it's a Pearl Soho linen yarn. Um, so it is meant to have like a little bit of a drape to it, which I think makes this little dimple look super nice. And anyway, I mean, it's a bag. I don't know how much more I can say about it, but I really enjoyed it. It was a great stash busting project. I think I ended up using like less than 300 yards of yarn. So maybe you could do this with a single skein of worsted weight yarn. I think the pattern is written with a single skein of that Pearl Soho. I think it's called their Blackbird Linen. I think they just use a single skein. So it's like, actually I think it probably used less than 200 meters of yarn. Cause I think I used about two and a half balls of the Drops Paris and that's like 75-ish meters per ball. So super awesome. I would definitely make more of these. They're so fun. Probably not for myself. I don't know how many of these I need, but for gifts, really great. So if you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift knit, these are so fun. I'm really happy with it. And the yarn is nice and soft, um, but structured. And yeah, I'm really, I don't know what else to say. People say I'm repetitive, so I need to just shut up and move on. <laughs> that's my dumpling bag by Pearl Soho. I love it. I love it. I love it. Fabulous. Um, okay. So when I finished the dumpling bag, I still had more yarn left over of the Drops Paris. I was hoping to use it up. Didn't use it all up. So then I thought, what, what should I use this for? And then, you know, I gave in, I gave into the temptation. I gave into the peer pressure. I gave into the temptation. I was call me, call me influenced. I was influenced. And I made myself a little Sophie scarf, which I'm sure you've seen about 10,000 versions of. This is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. I made the longer version um, with some modifications, but this is also knit in that Drops Paris in the color Petrol. Forgot to mention that, but yes, this is the color Petrol. Um, and this, so this is originally written for a DK weight yarn. Um, and this is a little bit bigger. So I think my dimensions are slightly off, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, like I said, I made the longer size, but I didn't do it quite to pattern. I was trying to use up every last stitch of yarn that I had. So I weighed like, I tried, I tried to weigh my yarn and divide it in half. And so I think I got like maybe three increases fewer than the larger size. And then I just knit straight for a while. So you can see right here, it's kind of flat on the actual Sophie scarf. It almost comes to a point with the increases and the decreases. I feel like I've jumped some steps here. This is a garter stitch little scarf. It's you start increasing and then you start decreasing. It's very simple, very beginner friendly. But again, as I was saying, you can see there's kind of like a flat part up here where I just knit straight for a while with no increases or decreases. Um, and in the actual pattern, I think that's more of like a point. You basically like do your increases and then immediately start decreasing. 
I did some straight, which I think I like because I didn't really want it to be pointy. And I did feel at some point it was getting kind of wide. So I would even do it again, but with a longer straight section. But anyway, let me put it on for you so you can see it in action. It's very cute. I think, um, I don't know. I have worn it once. I wore it like as soon as I finished it at this little party that I went to, like a family party. Um, and I wore it not double tied like this, but that was before I blocked it. So I think now that I've blocked it, it fits pretty comfortably double tied, but I also can wear it um, just single tied and like a little kerchief. I don't know. I think it's really cute. It's a fun little accessory. It would also make a great gift. It's not the most practical, but it's like, it's an accessory. It's for fun. It's just like a good stash busting project. Um, it's really cute. It's really easy. It was a good for travel. I did this while I was traveling pretty much exclusively. So um, ended up super fast. Love it. It's so fun. So that's my Sophie scarf and I'm really happy with it. I don't know how much wear I'm going to get out of it, but it's cute. And you could, if you don't want to wear it, you could always like tie it to your bag or give it, this is another great gift option. It's a very affordable pattern. It's less than her, than Petit Knit's normal pattern. So yeah, I enjoyed it. I would def, I would make another one if I had some, the right leftovers in my stash. It's a really good stash busting project. Um, again, so yeah, great gift, great stash buster. There's my little Sophie scarf. It's very cute and it's very squishy. I just love how squishy garter stitches. I don't knit it very often, so I enjoy it when I do. So methodical. Um, I wouldn't say mindless because you have to count your rows in between your increases and I just used my stitch counter, but I liked it. It was lovely. So that's my Sophie scarf. And that's finished object number two. Um, and then my third, my third, my third finished object is a little pair of slightly modified mittens, some fingerless mitts. These are the arched gusset mitts by Pearl Soho, which you can see. This is not my prettier one. This this one's a little prettier. Um, they're just a very basic mitten pattern with an arched um, increase where you do the, where, with an arched gusset where you do the increases for the thumb. Um, and I think they're really lovely and I'm really happy I made these. So I was thinking, I thought I needed fingerless mitts like a month or two ago um, because I work at home a lot of the time and in the mornings it can get really chilly and so my hands will get cold. I'm using my mouse, just clicking around, doing my work. My hands are really cold, but just the one hand. I don't know why. It's very strange, but just my right hand gets really cold. <laughs> so I made a pair, a single pair, a single mitt that I didn't love. It was a bulky weight yarn and it just wasn't super practical. So then I ripped those out and blah, blah, blah. And then I decided to cast another pair on. Um, and I didn't realize when I was doing it, but Emily from High Fiber Knits also did a modified version of these. Um, so I was working on the second of my mitts and I was watching Emily from High Fiber Knits and she started talking about how she was also knitting a mod or had knit a modified pair of these. And I just thought that was so funny. Um, but they're really great. And I think if you modify these to look, if you just modify them by just not doing the fingers or closing the hand and closing the thumb, they actually look quite a lot like the penny gloves. Um, from Petite Knit, which I know Laura from Penrose Knits has been on a, a penny glove marathon lately, but I just think they're so pretty and I really like them. This yarn is a mystery to me. Here, I'll show you how they fit and I'll talk you through. Um, this yarn is a mystery yarn. I got it in like a lot of wound up cakes that I had bought um, when I was visiting my mom in California in the summertime in June. Um, we went to a Goodwill and there was like a bag of random yarns with no labels, but there was a really pretty sock yarn in there. So I bought the whole bag because I wanted the sock yarn. It was like $6. And this yarn is one of the yarns that was in there. And I, I think it's some kind of like wool and linen blend. Um, and I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to see it because it's kind of dark in here. I'm losing the daylight. What else is new? But um, yeah, I'm not sure how well you can see <laughs> and you can see on here. I knit these on DPNs. And when I'm knitting on DPNs, I try and like move one stitch from a needle every time. So you can kind of see that even though this is blocked, this little, little spiral motif through here is from where I was moving my needles when I was knitting with my DPNs. Um, fun fact, but not what I was talking to you about. Um, so if you look at the fabric, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some like fibery pieces in here. Yeah, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. It is a very lovely fabric and I'm really happy with it. Um, Maybe I need to block that a little bit more to try and get those stitches to lay better. But anyway, when I was knitting with it, these little like white fibers were falling out of the yarn the whole time and they're kind of brittle. And this is a little bit scratchy. This is pretty rustic yarn. I mean, it's on my hands, so I really don't care. 
um, and I'm pretty tolerant to rustic yarns, but um, they're not soft. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how these turned out. So you'll see, this is the second one I knit, and just because of the direction of the decreases, it doesn't lay as nicely on the hand. Um, these lay really fine. It's like you make one left for one side and make one right for the other side. These are a free pattern, by the way. Um, so the make one rights didn't lay as nicely, but I don't really care about that. But anyway, yes. So you cast on and then just knit the arm and you start doing the increases for the thumb. You put the thumb on hold, you knit up, cast off. Um, this is the second glove I met, made and because they're meant to be gloves and not mittens, um, on the first one you can see there's just like a little bit of extra fabric here um, that just made them a little bit looser. Like there's a lot of wiggle room for my fingers. So on the second one, I just did two little decreases on the side, which I'm not sure how well you're gonna be able to see. Yeah, right there. I just did two central double decreases on the side to decrease out four stitches and they fit much better. Like you can see, there's just not as much wiggly room for my hand on this one. So I'm probably gonna rip this back and do those decreases because I like the fit of this a little bit better on my hand where it's not quite as loose. If I'm like biking or, you know, the wind can't get in there as easily and kind of see. There's just not as much space for my fingers to wiggle around. So I should probably fix that on this guy just to make them put a little cozier, but I made the thumb decently long. Maybe they're not sure that they're <laughs> the same length between the two mittens, but anyway, I'm really happy with these. Um, I think they'll be great for keeping me warm at my desk or if I'm biking in the winter time. I don't know, I just really like them. I was kind of a fingerless mitt hater for a long time, but I really understand their utility now. So much easier than knitting a glove and like knitting individual fingers. And it's sometimes nice to just have your fingers loose. Yeah, there's my little mitts. I love this color. Surprisingly, this is not like a color I would have ever chosen for myself, I think, if I was picking off the shelf at a yarn store. But I really like this, like, it's like a green apple is the best way I can describe it. I really like it. Um, and yeah, I just did a normal cast off at the top and at the thumbs, and I just knit until I liked the way that they fit. So that's that on that. I can leave some instructions on my Ravelry project page if you guys are interested in recreating it. You can also go over and see what Emily did from High Five Renettes. Um, if you do go over there, tell her I sent you, say hi. But yeah, I'm really happy with these and I'm excited to use them because it's only going to get colder here in Seattle for over the next few months. So very fun, very exciting and it was good to fun to knit on DPNs for a change because I'm not often a DPN knitter. I really prefer a short circular didn't have a short circular that would have worked for that. Or actually I did, but I didn't know where it was. So I enjoyed knitting on the DPNs and yeah. Okay, so that's all my finished objects. Um, now I have some works in progress, which you've seen before some and some that you haven't. Um, so yeah, I guess I'll just get into it. I'll start with the small ones because I have um, them handy. This is in my dumpling bag. I also have on my dumpling bag this cute little stitch marker that I forgot to show you last month when I was talking to you about my haul from Briggs & Little um, from Maritime Family Fiber, they sent me this cute little maple leaf stitch marker, which was so nice. I just have it hooked inside my bag. But my work in progress that I'm keeping in here is a little sock project. So this is a sock that I'm making for my husband for Christmas. He's in the other room, so I'm whispering so you can hear, but he can't. Um, so it's a little toe-up sock and I'm doing it ribbed on the top of the foot and stocking it on the bottom and then once I turn the heel I'll do the whole thing ribbed. I'm not really sure how to do men's sock sizes without trying them on and I want this to be a surprise so I can't have him try them on. So if you have any recommendations for how long to knit a sock, a men's sock, for someone who wears like a size nine and a half or ten US, it's like a 43 European, um, let me know. I'm whispering because my microphone is down here. Anyway, um, this yarn, this is the, oh gosh, I don't think I have the label on me. It's called Socks, um, and it's from a Swedish company, Svartefarit, um, that I bought when I was in Sweden. I was in Malmo earlier this year. We just took a day trip over from Copenhagen, and it was so cute, and I really enjoyed Malmo. Um, but I bought this yarn at a cute little yarn store, and it's just this, I'll show you the ball and the knit up fabric next to each other, like a barber pole marl in the yarn, so it makes a lovely marly fabric. It's superwash merino or superwash wool, um, 8525 I think, or 7525, no, it's 7030 merino nylon, so they'll be very sturdy for him. 
and very cozy and I really like the yarn. It's super soft. This would be really nice to knit a sweater with. I think it's 80 meters per 50 grams so it's like a bulky Aran weight yarn. And I'm knitting this up on a 2.75 millimeter needle. I'm not using a pattern for these because they're just toe up basic vanilla socks. Um, so yeah, I did 44 stitches, ribbing on the top. I think it's actually 26 ribbed stitches and 24, 20, 22 flat stitches. Sorry, I had to do the math and I'm not great at it. Um, so there's a few more stitches on the top than on the bottom, but I think that'll fit nicely. I think it's going to fit really nicely. The fabric is pretty dense, so they should be really warm. I think he'll wear them more as like house socks. I don't really think he'll wear them in his shoes or anything. I hope he wears them, honestly. But yeah, there's my little socks. I haven't made a ton of progress on these because I've been traveling a lot and when we're flying, he sits next to me. So I don't, I, mean, I don't think he would really pay attention or ask me who they're for, but I'm trying to keep them a little bit more quiet. So I mostly knit these when I'm going back and forth to work. And yeah, that's my little sock. It's very squishy and nice and I have to finish these by Christmas. So I will show you them before finished next time I see you. Um, so yeah, that's work in progress number one. Work in progress number two, let me grab, because I'm a little disorganized. Non-sweater work in progress number two is in this tiny little pouch, which I made. It's just a piece of like vintage quilt cotton with a zipper sewn into it. There's a lining, but it's a handy little pouch and it fits this project at its current stage quite well. And it's nice to show you because I've finished a row. This looks like nothing, <laughs> um, but I'll give you three seconds to guess what it is. This is the beginnings of a half and half triangles wrap. So I think I mentioned this at the end of my last video that I have this um, unspun yarn from, hi, I'm over here. here. I have this unspun yarn from Hillesvog, which I bought when I went to their mill in Norway this spring. Um, and I wasn't sure what to do with it because I had like one skein of white and one skein of dark black, which here I can show you. Hi, I had one large ball of the white natural color and I have one large ball of this charcoaly gray, almost black color. Um, and it was skeined up originally with two strands held together. And I'd knit a whole sweater from two balls of the yarn. So I was thinking I could stripe something or I could marl by like holding one strand of the gray and one strand of the white. But I ended up deciding to do a half and half triangles wrap and I'm holding it single. So this is the gray, so I'm not using it right now, but you can still see it's quite, it's quite delicate. So I have to be very gentle when I'm knitting with this, which is fine, but it's like, yeah, I don't know if you've seen lots of blown yarns, I'm sure. I think this is most similar to Newtodin, although I've never knit with Newtodin. I've used Plotilopi and um, Briggs and Little on spun yarn. But this is very delicate, very soft. Um, so I have to be really careful when I'm knitting with it and I had to be very gentle when I was unplying it, um, which I did by just basically like very gently, softly, it took like an hour to unply everything and then wind it into little cakes. But, um, yeah, so I've started my half and half wrap. I'm doing, I'm sure you've heard about this. This is a free pattern from Pearl Soho. Everyone's making it. It's delightful. It's a super squishy garter stitch shawl that is two big triangles basically. So you do it with short rows and this will end up being the middle of the shawl and it's gonna grow, 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 grow all the way to a point here and then you correct the short rows with the other color and get on your way. So I've done just a little tiny bit, I think 15 rows. So I'm just beginning, super small but so squishy. This yarn is delightfully soft. It's going to be quite thin, but I don't think that's fun. that's a problem. Um, when this is done, I'm going to picture myself using it more as like a lap blanket than a shawl because like I said, I work from home and we try not to put the heat on super high in the house during the winter. Um, so I keep a blanket on my lap when I'm working, but I could keep this on my lap later and it will keep me so much warmer because it's wool. Um, so I'm excited to have this done. This is a long-term project. I'm not in a rush to finish this. Honestly, I'd be happy to have this done by like March or April because it's cold enough in Seattle that you can kind of have something like this around most of the time. Um, so yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm really enjoying it. I'm knitting this on a 3.5, 2.5, 3.25 millimeter needle like the pattern recommends. 
Um, and I'm doing like a the smaller size, but a little bit larger. So I think the, for, there's two sizes. There's the small or the big and the bigger. I'm making the big and it's recommends to cast on 190 stitches. I cast on 200 just to have an even number because I'm not sure how much of this yarn I have and I want to try and use it all up but not have to buy any more because I can't buy any more. <laughs> There's no one in the United States that sells Hillesvold yarn. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. If I do end up running out, I can use Plotulo like I can sub in Plotulopi. They have similar colors um, for the small pieces that I need to, but I'm hopeful that I won't run out of yarn. So that's where I'm at on this. I'll show you a progress update next month. I'm not expecting it to be super a ton bigger than this because I'm it, the rows take a long time right now because I'm doing they're like quite long. It'll go faster once your like short rows are just do 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 do. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying this. It's very again like super nice repetitive garter stitch. After I finished the soapy scarf, I was like I'm ready to cast that on because there's just something so lovely about the squish of the fabric and just the ease of knitting back and forth. Um, the only thing is that this isn't like the most portable project because the yarn is so delicate and I'm like not gonna knit this on an airplane well unless I'm like in a very controlled space and I can I just have to be very careful so I'm not ripping the yarn to pieces so I'm still doing more travel in December so I'm not sure if this is gonna come with me or not it's nice and portable so there's that but it does take a long time to do the rows so we'll see but this will slowly be growing in the background um, and I'll give you an update on where she's at next month so yeah It'll be really cute when it's done, like a nice black and white. I know Inga is doing a black and white version of half and half right now. And I think Francesca is doing a half and half that also has white. I think her contrast color is something else. But anyway, I'm really excited about this. And I, this yarn is so sheepy. It's just like so sheepy and it smells just like the mill. Like when you walk, so the Hillsbog mill is outside of Bergen in Norway. And when you walk up the stairs to the like mill section, there's just like wave of sheepy smell comes to you. And I love it. It smells amazing. So I'm really enjoying knitting this with this yarn. It's a very tactile experience. Okay, I'm going to do a quick change to show you my next couple of projects so that you can see where I'm at and where they are on my body. So pause. Okay. Hi. Can you see my, my knitting? Hello. So this... Hi. I'm squished and my hair's tucked in, but... Um, this is my spot sweater by Ann Benzel, which I showed you as a work in progress last month. I was still working on the yoke, I think, when I showed you this last month. And now I have split for sleeves and put the neckband on. So I just wanted to show you where I'm at so far. Um, the yoke is quite deep. Everyone says that it is. It is very deep. This is where the yoke goes in my armpit. Here. Need two hands. Okay, my armpit is here. So it's quite deep. I did end up um, splitting for sleeves like maybe one or two rounds before it told me to, not a ton, um, because I wanted the good amount of positive ease in the body, but yeah, um, so that's where I'm at. I'm working on this sleeve, which this is actually the second time I'm working on this sleeve because I knit the, I'm going to step back so you can see, um, I'm just past the elbow, so I have like, I don't know, six more inches to go maybe? Um, yes. So I knit this sleeve once already and as at the decrease rate that the pattern recommends and it was just, it narrowed really fast and it looked really off balance with how wide the body was. It was a little too short. So I decided to rip it back and just do a little bit of a slower decrease rate, which gives me way more room in the arms. That's like my number one biggest pet peeve. Also, I turned the light on. I hope that's not distracting, but it was getting dark. Um, my number one most hated thing in any sweater, whether or not it's hand knit, is tight sleeves. I really don't like tight sleeves. I just, they feel really constricting, especially when there's a loose body. It's like a really gross feeling to me. So I do not like tight sleeves. So there is a good amount of positive ease in these sleeves um, and they'll continue tapering and they'll probably, I mean, they'll be loose, but not huge by the time I get to my wrist. What I ended up doing actually, was measuring the sleeve circumference on my Guernsey sweater because I am obsessed with that sweater. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the last video. It's the white textured um, sweater from Senniscarn. Um, and I really love the fit of that sweater. That's like maybe the, um, spoiler alert for my end of year roundup, but that's like my favorite fitting sweater that I have. I think that I've ever made. I love the way that the arms fit. So I measured the sleeve circumference on that and then figured if I can get to like around that circumference on this, I'd be really happy. And I think we might be able to get there. So maybe a little bit tighter. I'm not sure. We'll see. 
but yeah so I'm working this second sleeve again um, but yeah it's turning out really nice I don't remember if I told you last time but in the actual pattern this raglan is with pearl bumps and I started it that way and I didn't like it so I've switched out for knits which means like in the original pattern this is kind of cinched a little bit closer and you almost can't see the raglan but I like it better with knits it's just looks neater I think I have a hard time with pearls making them look nice so they look nice here and you can just kind of see the fabric um, I told you last time it's the blue is a 100% wool uh, it's a Canadian wool and it's like a vintage brand that you can't buy anymore and then the white is a it's a nature spun sport in natural and then it's held with a strand of lace weight alpaca and mohair blend um, so yeah it's it's a pretty thick dense fabric there's not a lot of drape in this fabric um, you can kind of see there's my floats I'll show you them I think they're very pretty honestly there's an end right there that needs to get woven in but yeah there's my floats um, and I, you can kind of see right now the nuance in the blue it's got like black and I don't know it's a really pretty yarn I'm really happy with the way this is coming out um, another modification I did is I made the cal the collar a little bit more shallow because another one of my knitting pet peeves <laughs> is when the cuff on the sleeve and the body is very different from the cuff at the neck. So this calls for, I think, like a four centimeter folded cuff. I did like two and a half, it's much shorter. Um, and when I actually knit the sleeve the first time, it made the cuff a little bit longer to match this. So that's where we're at. It is kind of creeping up a little bit, but I'm just gonna have to block it really aggressively. Uh, and this is also a common problem with the sweater is that it just kind of tends to like creep because of the number of stitches around the yoke or something. So you just kind of have to block it aggressively. And when actually I have blocked this already once, I blocked it when I finished, blocked it twice. I blocked it when I finished the yoke and I blocked it when I finished the sleeve, maybe just once. But I hung it to dry so that it would like, which I know is a no-no for knits, but I hung it so that this, the hanger would kind of push the shoulders out and the weight of the sweater would pull it down, which I think worked a little bit. And I think when I have the whole thing done, it will work even better to just kind of get it to hang and sit on my body the way that I want it to. But overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, I've done like two repeats on the body. And again, I'm gonna probably finish this sleeve in the next couple of days and move on to the next one. So hopefully I will have this done by the end of the year. I'm not like in a super rush with it. Um, I really like it and it's super warm and cozy, but I'm not like in any huge hurry to have it done. So yes, that's my spot sweater, modified sleeve decrease rate. Um, so yeah. That's, that's that. It's really pretty and I think it'll be, you can kind of get an idea of what it will look like when it's done if I just creep to the edge of the frame. But yeah, it's gonna be lovely. It's just taking its sweet time. And when I did have to rip out the sleeve, I like let it sit for like a week because I just didn't want to work on it anymore. So it's had a little bit of time, it's had a little bit of rest and I'm picking it back up again, knitting on this sleeve. I did all this sleeve in like the last 48 hours. So it's coming along grand. All right, another quick change for my last finished object. Okay, what do you think of my poncho? <laughs> it looks like a poncho because I have not yet split for sleeves, but this, I will stand close so you can see. This is my anemone sweater by Marta Clemens, who is a Swedish designer, I believe. It's this really pretty colorwork sweater with these just happy little daisies or anemones on it. I'll show you the back as well. It's rolling, but. You know, I'm not sure how useful that is to you. I did add some short rows in the back and they're not really doing what they need to do. I think once I split for sleeves, the fit will be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, this is where I'm at so far on the anemone sweater. I'm about to split for sleeves. I took this with me when I was traveling this last week and worked on it quite a lot and then I ran out of the white yarn. So I've blocked it to check the fit and make sure the floats are laying nicely. And here she is. I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna take it off so I can talk to you about it. I like the neck a lot. Actually, before I take it off, I like the neck a lot. It's a, like a good turtleneck that's not super tight and itchy because this is a, kind of a more rustic yarn. Okay, I'm now gonna take it off for real. We're back. <laughs> um, so this is, like I said, the Anemone Sweater by Merita Clemens. It's a top-down raglan, stranded color work. I love it, it's gorgeous. I'll show you the inside because I feel like the floats are also quite pretty. It's almost like when you invert um, photos or like you look at a negative. I just think it's so cool looking. So that's where we're at on this. I'm about to split four sleeves. I have like maybe 10 more rounds to go before I split four sleeves, which doesn't sound like about, but it is, I'm getting pretty close. 
Um, like I said, I added some short rows at the back, which had a rowing out issue, so it's not the cutest, but I just wanted to add a little bit of height to the neck. When I wear it, it's kind of doing this puckery thing where this just like puckers. I don't know, it's not laying nicely, but I think once the weight of the sweater kind of pulls it down a little bit more, it'll work. I just didn't want it to be too high up in the front, which is why I added the short rows. Um, and yeah, I love the colors. So this natural yarn, this natural white color is a reclaimed yarn from an old, another handmade sweater that I found at a thrift store. And then the yellow contrast color is Heritage by Briggs & Little which is a Canadian yarn producer, and this is the color yellow WO. It's this gorgeous heathery yellow with like all of these colors in it. It's got like oranges and yellows and reds and pinks in it, and it makes the most beautiful color. And I just think this is the happiest, most sunshiny little sweater ever. I love the little rolled thing at the neck. The same thing um, design element carries over to the sleeves and the cuff. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's very slow going because these are some pretty long rows with a lot of color work, and some long floats. Um, I'm not regularly catching my floats. If it's longer than like six stitches, then I will catch, but I just find it really slows me down to catch floats and shows, shows through the fabric and looks kind of wonky. So I'm not really catching floats and it seems to be working out okay. So yeah, I'm really happy with this. It's fun. It's really engaging and I'm really enjoying it. I'm just excited to have it. I think it will be great. Hello, I'm over here. Thanks. I think it will be great for springtime because spring in Seattle is cold. Like it doesn't really get warm until like May, sometimes June. So even though this is double thick with the floats and everything, I could also just wear this as a jacket in the springtime. I just think it's so pretty and happy. Um, I will say this is not a beginner friendly pattern. The pattern writer is not a native, I don't think she's a native English speaker, so the instructions in the English version are not the most straightforward. They're not hard to follow if you are an like, intermediate or experienced knitter, but um, wouldn't like pick this as a first color work project. Spot sweater is much better for that, although it can be also tricky at times. So yeah, um, that is my anemone sweater. It's so fun. I think I'm gonna continue knitting on this. I'm not expecting either, both of these to be done this month. I'll probably finish the spot sweater in December and keep working on this and finish it up in January, but we'll see about that. I do have some more traveling coming up and some long flights, so we'll see how much dang time I have. But yeah, that's fun and I'm really enjoying the yarn. I'm still working on the first cake of the Briggs and Little, so, and I bought three, so I should have enough to do the whole sweater. I can at least split for sleeves and get a good section of the body done with one. And I'm thinking if I can get like the sleeves out of one and the rest of the body out of one, I should be, should be good, good on the yarn. So really happy with this, which also makes it very economical because this yarn is super cheap. It's like $7 a skein or something. And since the main color is reclaimed, this whole sweater will clock in like under $30 probably, maybe 40 with the pattern, but very cheap for like decently priced. So yeah, that's my anemone. She's so cute. Okay, so that's all the works in progress and the finished objects that I have. The only other thing that I have that I do want to show you because I don't have any acquisitions this month. I did buy something, it just has not arrived to me yet. So I will show it to you next month. Um, but I do have some swatches to show you. So at last month I mentioned that I'm going to be working on the Moonset Pullover by Ozetta, which is this gorgeous um, V-neck pullover. Just like really loose, cozy pullover and it just looks perfect for like the really cold winter months. So very excited to cast that on. I haven't cast it on yet because I have those two sweater projects going on and I don't really want to start a third sweater project right now. So as soon as I finish one of those Colorworks sweaters, I will be casting it on. And I received a lot of positive feedback about doing a dedicated video just for the Moonset pullover. So I will be doing that. My plan is to do that. Um, but I just haven't started it yet because I haven't started the sweater yet. But I did swatch because I got excited and I wanted to see the yarns. So I've done two swatches and this is the first one. So this is on 4.5 millimeter needles, which is the recommended needle size. And my gauge is a little bit loose. There's like a lot of drape in this fabric, but it's so pretty, isn't it? This is a Swedish, no, Finnish yarn. Could you, could you focus? Could you focus? There we go. This is a Finnish yarn. The main yarn is a Finnish yarn that I dyed myself. It was kind of like a bright yellowy color before and I dyed it this mossy green. 
and then I'm holding it with a strand of Drops Kid Silk Mohair and I think it's the shade number is 19. It's either 19 or 25. It's their foresty green color. So this was the one on the 4.5 millimeter needles um, and the gauge is a little bit loose, but I just love the fabric that it's making. The kind of variegated dyed yarn and then the core of the silk mohair and then the actual mohair makes this really interesting marly color. Very happy with it. And the shine from the silk mohair is also beautiful. So then I did another swatch and this is on a four millimeter needle. And this got me pretty much bang on gauge. So this is what I'm gonna be using. I almost always have to go up a needle size. So this will be interesting. Um, and I may end up having to go up to the 4.5 when I knit in the round. These are flat swatches because I'm lazy. So we'll see, but yeah, the fabric has a beautiful drape to it. Like there's a lot of movement in this fabric. It's that same beautiful color. It's lovely. So I'm really excited to cast this on. It's gonna be so nice, but I will cast it on probably, I don't know, probably at the end of the month, honestly. I may have it cast on by the time I see you next, but I'm not promising anything. I'm just really excited to make it. And there's a lot of other patterns that I'm really excited to make. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna keep trucking through these sweaters in December, finish up that pair of socks. I'll probably make myself a hat. Actually, I have the yarn here I can show you. This is a mystery skein of a navy blue yarn that I bought at the Hillsvog Mill. Big Hillsvog theme this, this month. Um, this is just like a mystery skein. It didn't have a label on it. It was like $2.50 for a 100% wool. This is like a worsted weight, I would say. It doesn't have the same sheepy smell, but it's lovely. I think it's, I don't think it's pelf wool. I think it's Norwegian lamb's wool, but we'll see when I wash it. But I'm really excited to knit this up into a hat. I think I'm gonna do the Northern Torrid's hat, which has really beautiful crown decreases. I'll link it for you so you can see. Um, but some kind of simple hat for me because I just love a good hat in the winter time. I don't have a navy one. I don't actually have any dark colored hats at all. So that will be lovely. Probably we'll cast that on and have that done by the time I see you next. Um, and who knows, I always end up casting on something random. So <laughs> we'll see, um, what I end up working on. But yeah, that is it for me for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. It is now almost dark outside. So I hope the light change was okay with the lamp, but um, I hope you have a wonderful December. I'm hoping to see you again more often in December. I'm not going to promise I will not be doing a daily vlogmas. I don't have an interesting enough life for that, nor do I have enough time to edit and post a video every day, but I will at least post like a, I'm hoping to post a weekly video for December. And if not, like I will post my mid month video for sure it will be something festive. So. Um, keep a lookout for more videos from me. If you have any video suggestions, I'm happy to hear that in the down box or in the comments below. Um, I just love replying to your comments and reading your comments. It makes me so happy. I read everyone, every single comment that you leave me and I heart it so you can know when I've read it. Um, the notifications pop up on my phone when I get a comment. So I sometimes reply to them very quickly. Um, but it's just so exciting. I love interacting with you all and those of you who message me or follow me on Instagram It's great to hear from you. You can follow me here if you would like to follow me over there um, Got some sneak peeks of some of the projects I worked on this month. So it's fun. I just really love interacting with you all and Making this hobby into like more of a collaborative thing Because I love knitting and I do have some wonderful real-life knitting friends but they don't have the like encyclopedic knitting knowledge that I have. So I'm just happy that I get to just like really go full force for an hour or two every month talking about my favorite thing. So thank you all again for watching. Thank you for being here. Thanks for subscribing. If you are a new subscriber and um, if you are not, please join us. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and have a lovely, wonderful, warm and cozy December and I will see you very soon.